jigging is a symbol of our identity. The Métis combined the reels and waltzes from our European ancestry with the dances of our Plains First Nations relatives, creating dances that were unique to the Métis. This adaptability accentuates the accessibility of our culture by bringing our traditions within the here and now of contemporary dance. Indeed, the musical culture of the Métis is a reflection of resiliency and adaptability of who we are as a people. Yvonne Chartrand and Vigny Dancy show that dance is an agency of resistance and a form of cultural distinction. The Louis Riel Dance Group shares traditional Métis stories through a contemporary lens. Vigny Dancy is a Métis and contemporary dance company based here in Vancouver. I'm their artistic director, Yvonne Chatron, and we have the Louis Riel Métis dancers who are the traditional Métis dance group of the company, and then we tell our stories through contemporary dance. Just really, 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 really appreciative of that knowledge from the elders, because they are like our universities. They're knowledge keepers and they, you know, are so generous in passing on that traditional knowledge. What makes Métis square dancing totally unique is that we jig throughout all of the all of the all of the um, square dances. Um, so, square dancing mostly people walk through all the square dances. Métis uniquely jig through all of the square dances. And now, nowadays, um, the yeah, people are wearing square dance outfits. And there's like even in when we do our some of our uh, choreography. Uh, I think that we do about 33 to 35 different steps in one in one square dance. So there's probably about like a hundred different steps in the, the Red River Jig. And traditionally they used to be just single steps. So nowadays a lot of people are combining the steps and making new steps. So the, the importance of the music, it, it plays an integral part. Um, the fiddle and the dance have, have gone together for, for many, many years, hundreds of years. We, we feed off of each other. We feed off of each other's energy. Um, if the dancers are dancing hard, the fiddle player is fiddling harder, and vice versa. And uh, sometimes you make a bit of a competition of it, and you, you try and outdo one another, which is a traditional thing. So I think they're both equally important, and they go together. It's, it's like, like the infinity symbol. It's, it's very, it's one together. I think the music is important, too, because it's really a reflection of our ancestry and that comes through the French out of Quebec and the Scottish out of James Bay, Irish in there too, and of course the, uh, the indigenous rhythms. So it's really reflective of who we are and I think dance is really the celebration of music. Sometimes people just did a duet, a Red River Jig instead of a solo Red River Jig. And a lot of times there was competition. So John Arcan from the church, um, from the John Arcan Fiddle Fest, he would have like different competitions. So different couples would would compete against each other with the with the uh, a duet Red River Jig. So it was just trying to show like kind of like an old the old ways of uh, of dancing and and the different ways that you could do the Red River Jig. And there's a few different stories that I've heard about the sash dance. One of them is like when the Scottish people crossed the swords um, and they had a dance that they did. It was inspired or influenced by that dance, except for the Métis crossed the sashes and then they did their own unique steps inside of the sashes. We did the broom dance as well. And uh, that dance, the, there, you can go into big, long, elaborate stories about um, about, well, my, fa my grandfather was a trapper and a hunter and he would go way up north in the Paw, Manitoba, and he had some land out there and sometimes he went by himself and he'd be really lonely and, well, you know, maybe his cousin would come along and, and the, you know, in his old dog sled and he'd hear the dogs just yelping, oh, I'll get a visitor, and then he, 
that he would come inside, welcome inside, welcome him inside, and cook him up some rubaboo. And what's rubaboo? It's stew made with whatever you, whatever you got. And so they would eat and have some bannock, and and then uh, and then that cousin would take out, get his old flour sack, and pull out a fiddle. And well, he started playing that fiddle. And when one a Métis hears that fiddle. All they want to do is dance. Well, he had no dance partner, so he grabbed the broom and that was the dance. So I think setting, setting the tempo uh, for, the, for the dance is a very important part uh, because you don't want to do your steps too fast and you don't want to do them too slow, otherwise you, if the music's too slow, I found that the dancers sometimes, uh, they just can't, get the feel. So the tempo is very important for that, that whole feel of the music, the whole energy of the music. With, with the crooked tunes, you know, uh, and especially the Red River Jig, because it's kind of, it's just that way, it's, uh, we don't know how long the fiddler's going to play um, each section, and because it's in two parts and we're doing a step during the first part and a different step in the second part, uh, actually, you know, when we were dancing earlier today and uh, JJ was playing the Red River Jig. At some point he played a little longer and then it made us all bubble up and laugh and we had to kind of step, you know, pick up our steps and, you know, so it makes it really playful between the dancers and the musicians and it makes it, uh, it makes us be really present in the moment because with 4-4 timing as a dancer, uh, where it's straight and it's simple, you know, you can get on autopilot, on auto autopilot if you're, uh, if you really know the dance. But with this, no matter how many times you've done the dance, you always have to listen to the music and just feel it and then change with the music. So it make, keeps you really in the moment. I think the, the beauty about Métis dance and gathering, and it's about community, it's about connection. And, um, you know, I had the pleasure to go to like over 20 different Métis communities across BC, you know, and, and probably more throughout my years. and, and there's just a, a beautiful experience. Every time that I went to a community, how they wel welcome me, you know, they would be like, you know, oh, cook me a buffalo roast. And then people would t share all kinds of culture, their stories of their ancestors. And when you go to a, a gathering and you experience something like that, you experience the music, the dancing, the stories, and the food and, and all our culture, there's a real beauty to that, and you know, it's, uh, I mean, I love it, and I know that my people love it, and I know that you will all love it if you have that experience. Métis dances and Métis music was, were created for, you know, community. It was created to gather and created to celebrate and to ride out the hardships of being a Métis person. It, it's a, just an extension of that, that community-based, uh, celebratory-based reason why we created these dance forms, why we created this music. It was to celebrate and to uplift us through all of the hardship.